Hey, how's it going, friends? Thank you for tuning in to VR Revelations. Welcome. Uh, please make sure you give this video a like and make sure you subscribe for future coverage. Also, if you want to support the channel, check out the links below. So, it is April 9th, the year of our Lord, 2023. And happy Easter to all of you believers out there. Um, so let's jump right into the news, guys. Uh, it looks like tensions are very high right now between Taiwan and China. And before we get into this, let's just go over a quick recap of the situation. Of course, we know that China considers Taiwan part of China as a, as a whole, right? Now, Taiwan is a island uh, that is really close to China. And uh, the U.S. for the last couple of years has been having relations with Taiwan and this has been making uh, China mad due to the fact that uh, China uh, believes Taiwan is part of mainland China. And so if the U.S. wants to have any uh, talks with uh, Taiwan or anything like that. They believe that the U.S. shouldn't be flying over to Taiwan, but that they should be flying into mainland China and talking with the politicians there, with the official government there. Now, we're going to take a quick read here at the One China Policy because this is uh, this is the, you know, the topic of debate here between sort of the United States and China. So, what is the One China Policy? Well, uh, yours truly, Wikipedia here, says the One China policy refers refers to a United States policy of strategic ambiguity regarding Taiwan. In a 1972 joint communique with the People's Republic of China, the United States acknowledges that all Chinese on either side of the Taiwan Strait maintain uh, maintain there is but one China and that Taiwan is part of China and does not challenge that position. It reaffirms the U.S. interest in a peaceful settlement of the Taiwan question. The United States has formal relations with the People's Republic of China, recognizes the People's Republic of China as the sole legal government of China and simultaneously ma maintains its unofficial relations with Taiwan while not recognizing China's sovereignty over Taiwan. So it's pretty much, uh, you know, speaking out of one side of its mouth and then speaking out the other. It's saying two things that contradict each other. And so essentially what's happening here, guys, is that, uh, you know, there was a, a civil war in China. The losing side fled to Taiwan. Um, and then throughout the course of the years, the U.S. kept telling uh, mainland China, yes, Taiwan is part of China, we recognize it, we accept it. But at the same time, they were working behind the scenes to democratize Taiwan uh, and, uh, you know, bring their uh, liberal ideology uh, into Taiwan. And so now, uh, Taiwan has been uh, indoctrinated with the United States uh, uh, ideology of liberalism and all of that stuff. And so, uh, especially with the government in Taiwan, right? And th this is where, you know, the tensions are being created. China uh, let its guard down uh, for a very long time, and the U.S. took advantage of that uh, to indoctrinate the Taiwanese uh you know, the Taiwanese island. And so now, uh, China is seeing itself with a huge problem, right? In trying to reel in Taiwan uh, when the people there, or even more, the government is pro-Western, uh, right? So they are sympathizers with the United States. And just recently, we actually saw the uh, president, the female president there of Taiwan, fly over to the United States. So what kind of uh, message do you think that's sending, right? 
Um, but the interesting thing here is that uh, Taiwan is not recognized by the majority of the world as an actual nation. So if you went over to a piece of land to some island and you put a flag down and you named it and you wanted it to be recognized internationally, well, those other nations have to accept uh, your country. And so um, I want to show you this map here. All these orange uh, places you see on the map uh, are currently uh, countries that do not recognize Taiwan as an official country. As you can see here, that's pretty much most of the world, which is funny because the United States, again, is, you know, it's the best hypocrite there is on the world stage. They say one thing and then they'll say another all to advance their own interests, and I don't blame them. This is just the way of the world. So, as we can see here, it says, Is Taiwan a country? This straightforward question has a remarkably complicated answer. Taiwan has alternated from nation to territory to nation and back again throughout its history. As of 2022, the simplest answer is, it depends whom you ask. To be considered a country in today's global political sphere, a territory must be diplomatically recognized by the 193 member states of the United Nations. And while some 13 countries and the Vatican City do recognize Taiwan as of April 2022, the rest of them don't. So... The U.S. literally has no backing in what it's doing right now. Of course, we saw Nancy Pelosi, uh, the former Speaker of, uh, of, the, uh, of Congress, fly over to Taiwan and speak there with the President of Taiwan. Uh, and this angered China a, a lot. They were threatening to shoot down the plane. They ended up not doing anything. And now... Uh, I believe Kevin McCarthy, the new speaker, uh, is planning a trip. I believe uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure if he's gone. Um, let's actually let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, speaker McCarthy. Okay, McCarthy to Taiwan to Taiwan. Okay, McCarthy said he wanted the Taiwan president to see that this is a bipartisan meeting of members of Congress, not any one not anyone political party. Uh, U.S. tensions with China on display as McCarthy hosts. Speaker McCarthy meets with Taiwan. Okay, so uh, I guess when the uh, Taiwanese president flew over to the U.S., that's when uh, he, uh, she met with uh, the Speaker of the House. So again, to, to China, as they sit back and look at this, it's pretty much the U.S. that is instigating this, right? They're the ones that are making it seem like uh, Taiwan is a country of its own. Um, as they continue to send their politicians and receive their politicians. So they're working together. And at the same time, the U.S. is trying to say, hey, China, yeah, we understand you. We we." We accept what you're saying, right? That that it's one China, right? That Taiwan is part of China. Um, but at the same time, their actions are proving otherwise. So it's no surprise that this is all going to lead to a war, guys. The United States has already admitted this. And as we're going to take a look, things right now are at a boiling point. Uh, I believe this is uh, the tensions here are similar to what we saw in Ukraine before Russia actually decided to invade. And let me tell you, if if you think Taiwan is going to put up the resistance that Ukraine is putting up, you're dead wrong on that. OK, the Chinese will roll over Taiwan. Taiwan is a small island. It's not the size of Ukraine. It's not landlocked. Uh, it's surrounded by sea, and the closest nation is China. It's very close to China. Um, China, all it has to do is just strike uh, the island with its missiles, and it can completely obliterate it. It's not easy for Taiwan to receive help like Ukraine has because it's surrounded by ocean. 
it would be very troublesome for the United States and other European nations to deploy weapons over there. It would just be a mess, a, a, a logistical mess for any nation that uh, would try and help Taiwan. And again, its army is not as good or as formidable as Ukraine's was. So, um, you know, the Chinese would completely destroy Taiwan. And I think, uh, I think that's the only thing the Chinese can do right now. Unfortunately, they let their guard down for way too long. And uh, the only way they can actually reel in Taiwan is through force. And as we're seeing here, that's exactly what the Chinese are planning. So, the BBC here reporting 20 hours ago, China simulates hitting key targets on Taiwan. China has simulated precision strikes against key targets on Taiwan and its surrounding waters during a second day of military drills. The drills, which Beijing has called a stern warning to the self-governing island, are a response to Taiwan's president visiting, visiting the U.S. last week. As the Chinese military simulated an encirclement of the island, the U.S. urged China to show restraint. Taiwan said about 70 Chinese aircraft flew around the island on Sunday. 11 Chinese ships were also spotted. On Saturday, Taiwan said that 45 uh, warplanes either crossed the Taiwan Strait median line, the unofficial dividing line between Taiwanese and Chinese territory, or flew into the southwestern part of Taiwan's air defense identification zone. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this Taiwan Strait, uh, just so we can get a, a, a clear picture of what the article is talking about. Let's go to images here. So we can clearly see here, guys, uh, Taiwan is right here. Um, again, it is a small island here right uh, uh, next to China. And you can see this is the, uh, the supposed official line where, you know, if Chinese ships are sailing past it, they have to report to uh, Taiwan and vice versa. If, ta if Taiwan is uh, near this line, they would have to let China know. And so, you know, there's uh, you wouldn't have any possibility of accidental fire between the ships patrolling that area. But for a while now, China has been crossing the line without letting uh, Taiwan know. And now they're simulating uh, attacks on, on Taiwan and they're simulating an encirclement of the island. And uh, as we're going to read on the article, there are about 20 uh, Chinese ships uh, and uh, I mean 10 Chinese ships and 10 Taiwanese uh, ships right along this line that are pretty much just looking at each other, getting ready to fire and, uh, you know, tensions tensions are boiling up here so uh, war is going to break out guys this is this is going to be uh, this is going to be another war here and it's it's the US that's instigating the whole situation and uh, uh, again once once this breaks out there's no going back between China and the US I'm not saying we're going to see a nuclear war I'm not even I'm not even saying that the US is uh, going to send its its uh, its soldiers out there, which I don't believe they will. But the economic repercussions. If you think that uh, you know all the sanctions that the U.S. put on Russia are were bad, right, for the global economy, just wait until uh, we have a war between China and Taiwan, and then we have an economic, a full out economic war between the U.S. and China. Then the whole world economy is going to, uh, f you know, go on a free fall spiral, and the U.S. economy is absolutely going to collapse. And I think that's what's actually coming. So, um, the article here goes on as the Chinese military si simulated an encirclement of the island. The U.S. urged China to show restraint. Taiwan said about 70 Chinese aircraft flew around the island on Sunday. 11 Chinese ships were also spotted. On Saturday, Taiwan said that 45 warplanes either crossed the Taiwan Strait median line, the unofficial dividing line between Taiwanese and Chinese territory, or flew into the southwestern part of the Taiwan's air defense identification zone. 
The operation dubbed Joint Sword by Beijing will continue until Monday. Taiwanese officials have been enraged by the operation. On Saturday, defense officials in Taipei accused Beijing of using President Tsai's U.S. visit as an excuse to conduct military exercises, which has seriously undermined uh, peace, stability, and security in the region. On day one of the drills, one of China's ships fired a round as it sailed near Pingtan Island, China's closest point to Taiwan. Taiwan's Ocean Affairs Council, which runs the Coast Guard, issued video footage showing one of its ships shadowing a Chinese warship, though did not provide a location. In the footage, a sailor can be heard telling the Chinese ship through a radio, you are seriously harming regional peace, stability, and security. That's actually the U.S. that's doing that, much like they did with Ukraine. Please immediately turn around and leave. If you continue to proceed, we will take ex expulsion measures. Other footage showed a Taiwanese warship, the Diohua, uh, accompanying the Coast Guard ship in what the Coast Guard officer calls a standoff with the Chinese vessel. While the Chinese exercises ended by Sunday on Saturday evening, defense officials in Taipei said fighter jet sortie started, uh, started again early on Sunday morning. U.S. State Department officials have urged China not to exploit President Tsai's U.S. visit and have called for restraint and no change to the status quo. A State Department spokesperson said the U.S. was monitoring uh, Beijing's actions closely and insisted the U.S. had sufficient resources and capabilities in the region to ensure peace and stability and to meet our national security commitments. So there you go, the United States firing back with threats. The U.S. severed diplomatic ties with Taipei in favor of Beijing in 1979, but it is bound by law to provide Taiwan with the means uh, to defend itself. That's the U.S.'s law. Literally, the U.S. makes up its own laws regarding foreign countries and, uh, uh, you know, foreign policy. So uh, th that's pretty much what happened here, guys. Uh, in, in those days, right, in those years, 1970, 1980, the U.S. accepted that Taiwan was part of China. I'm sure they had a sit down and looked at the whole situation strategically and said, hey, it would be good for us to... Uh, you know, change the mindset of the people in Taiwan, the government to be pro-American. That way, in a future, um, we can make use of that island. That's exactly what they were trying to do with Ukraine, right? They were trying to create a proxy state where they could go in and install missiles and weapons and have an army there right up against uh, Russia. So that's what they try to do here with Taiwan, and it worked. The U.S. is the best at doing that, right? And much like Russia uh, let its guard down, but uh, you know, but reacted in time, they 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 were forced to invade Ukraine. It's the same thing that's going to happen here with Taiwan. China let its guard down. Uh, the U.S. through its propaganda ministers. Uh, indoctrinated uh, the, the Taiwanese and uh, infiltrated the government. So now they have a sort of liberal government, a pro-American government. And uh, the only way that China can actually take back Taiwan is through force. They're not going to do it diplomatically. And so I think we're going to have the breakout of a war. And again, I'm not making any new revelations here. This is what the United States is saying. They predicted a war with China by the year 2025. Um, but I don't think we're going to have a full, full out war. I think China is going to attack Taiwan. They're going to invade it. And I think they are going to do it uh, a lot quicker than what Russia is doing in Ukraine since Taiwan is an island and they just don't have the military that Ukraine has. Um, and so I think it's going to be terrible for, for the, the, uh, the island. And I think the U.S. is going to continue to make threats. But uh, at the end of the day, this is just an impossible mission for the U.S. There's no way they can actually defend Taiwan 
uh, due to the location and to the logistics and the problems of shipping weapons and, uh, you know, essentially through ships, right? Because they're not even going to be able to do it through airplanes as they have been doing now since China in the simulation simulated strikes on airfields and things like that. So you can imagine the U.S. trying to ship weapons or other European nations across the sea. Um, it would just be disastrous. And the U.S. is definitely not going to send boots on the ground to the island. Again, this is just too, uh, too close to China for all of that. So, but I think the, big, the, you know, the biggest consequences from this is that we're going to see an accelerated economic war, all-out economic war, that's going to affect the whole world. It's going to precipitate in a global economic collapse. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we're going to see the fall of America as prophesied in the Bible. But then again, we're going to have the new world order, guys. So that's the reason why I don't think we, we will see a World War III scenario over Taiwan, much like Ukraine. But later on in the future, you know, as things continue to boil up because of all of this crazy stuff that's happening because of these wars, then eventually we will see a World War III. Uh, as the Bible states, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and then the end will come. But uh, yeah, I think uh, this year or next year, guys, I think we are going to see an invasion of Taiwan. So keep your eye on that. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, the truth is stranger than fiction. God bless. Have a wonderful day.